Uh, I just wanted to welcome our alumni, families, and guests. Happy homecoming and family week. We'll give it another minute or two for some folks to join the call. Um, in the meantime, you might have noticed that you've been muted upon arrival, um, but you're welcome to turn on your cameras so that you can see who all is in our meeting. You can also toggle between speaker view and grid view uh, if you'd like to see who all is in attendance with you as well. So please feel free to rename yourself. You can do that by right clicking um, on your name under the participants tab so that we can keep track of who's in attendance. If you're an alum, feel free to enter your class year there. If you're a parent, feel free to enter your students class year as well. You'll notice the chat feature below. Um, we invite you to, to use that right now to say hello to each other. Uh, let us know where you're from, um, what major, what major, uh, you graduated from or, or maybe what your student is studying if you're a parent as well. We have several members of our team on the call. So if you have any questions, we'll go through back, we'll go back through those um, during our Q&A at the end of the call. Um, and so we'll be keeping track of those throughout the call as well. Um, and then our last housekeeping item today before we get started is just to remind everyone that these sessions are being recorded and will be shared to the Jackson University YouTube uh, channel at the end of Homecoming and Family Week. So now that we've got a few more folks joined here and um, we've hit three o'clock, my name is Lauren Griffith and on behalf of everyone in the Office of Alumni and Family Engagement, thank you all so much for joining us for this event. Parade of Colleges is a, a great opportunity for you to catch up with our college leadership and learn what's new in the college with its faculty. So we're excited to be able to offer this event in a virtual format this year so that you can hear directly from our Dean and our campus leadership as I mentioned earlier, there will be a Q&A at the end of the session, so feel free to drop your questions into the chat and we will make sure that they are addressed. So I'll like, I'd like to go ahead and introduce um, our speakers from the College of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Matt Corgan joined Jacksonville University in 2019 as the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. Dean Corrigan is a nationally recognized expert in American and Southern politics and the American presidency. Dean Corrigan will be joined by Dr. Kara Conway and Shelley Grant, two faculty members in the College of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Conway is an assistant professor of biology at JU, and Shelley Grant is an assistant professor of sociology and was awarded the 2020 Faculty Woman of the Year. So at this point, I'll go ahead and turn it over to our speakers so you all can get started. Feel free to take it away, Dr. Corrigan. Lauren, I really appreciate it. And I wanna welcome all our guests uh, who are live with us and thank you for taking the time. I also want to uh, welcome those who may see this on a recording and, and appreciate you taking some time to be with us. Uh, it, it's been a great year. It's been my first year as Dean and uh, it's been a challenging year, no question about it, but uh, it's a wonderful place to come to work. Uh, you know, our college is so, uh, important and foundational to the university, and it's so diverse. Uh, everything from ROTC to the humanities, the social sciences, science and math, the School of Education, and uh, Wilma's Little People School. So uh, it's quite uh, an interesting job, and it's and, and I'm really honored to be a part of the university and, and to be with you here today. And we have two of our, our really great professors, uh, Dr. Kara Conway, uh, from biology and uh, Professor Shelley Grant from sociology and criminal justice and they're going to help us uh, really describe what's going on in the college and, and how we're impacting our students. Uh, we're just going to do a couple of, of uh, quick slides and then we're going to get into really some pictures where I think you can really see what's going on in the college. Just a summary of the college is established in May 1967. Um, the five divisions I've already talked about or mentioned. We have 85 full-time faculty. Uh, our college in terms of teaching teaches about 47% or 45% of the undergraduate hours in, at the university and about 37% of all the hours at the university. So again, really an important part of the university. We have 980 student uh, majors. Uh, we have 30 major programs. And we're undergoing right now from really direction from, I think from the president and the provost to look at our programs and see if we need to do some new alignments. And so we have a task force that are that will assemble this week and start this week and start that work. And, and so I look forward to, to some of those uh, results to, to see if we can be more efficient or more meaningful to the community. Uh, just a couple of uh, points here in terms of our mission. We are the liberal arts core and foundation of the university. 
The president often talks about this in the first sentence when he describes the university, and we take that very seriously. Uh, you know, anything, the courses from English to philosophy to the sciences and biology to social sciences, really completing that core is really important to our students and it gives them the critical skills that employers are looking for, you know, critical thinking, communication, problem solving. Uh, we take that very seriously and it's an important part of what we do. And really the second part of what we're trying to do is if you decide to be a major in our college, we're going to offer you a unique experience that's going to give you a leg up for graduate school or your career opportunities. And, and whether that's an internship in criminal justice or really student faculty, faculty research in biology, uh, you'll hear about a couple of those examples coming up. But we really try to work on that uh, faculty student interaction. You know, I was at UNF for 25 years and just coming here and I'm teaching a class this semester. It's just an amazing difference. I can have a much uh, really healthier relationship with the students because I'm not trying to teach 70 students in a classroom. And so it's, it's exciting for me and it's exciting for our faculty. Uh, we want to make sure that we're having an important community impact and uh, COVID-19 has, has had some impact on that, but we're still doing uh, lots of things virtually and we're having some people doing on site things as long as the agencies that we work with are you know, abiding by COVID protocols. Uh, we're also really involved in creativity and innovation. Uh, we're working with the provost on an important project called PODS, and that's really to match up uh, students with their interest in both a major and a minor or a double major. And, uh, and really, uh, we are, I think are a lot of a choice for that second major a lot of times, really to, to give a fuller picture of for, uh, for the students and for the individual. And also the STEAM initiative that uh, we're working on in terms of having an institute that deals with technology and the arts and, and we're working on fundraising for that right now. And uh, I think there's gonna be some exciting possibilities coming up in the future for that. And just one important point, we have tremendous really long-term outcomes in terms of our what our graduates do. Uh, president of our university is a proud psychology graduate of our college. Artis Gilmore, probably the, the, the second famous name here associated with the university is one of our graduates. Herb Payton, the, uh, the owner of, of Gate Petroleum and, and Gate Corporation is one of our graduates. Nina Waters, you know, our nonprofit leader in the community. And there are many, many others, and there's some probably on this, this call right now. Uh, and again, we really think that a well-rounded education combined with really unique experiences and opportunities really gives us a leg up and, and we appreciate your support and you being with us. Um, you may be wondering how we're dealing with COVID. Uh, one of the ways we're dealing with this is having outdoor classes. Uh, the president's put, uh, you know, I think about 30 to $40 million into the campus in the last four to five years. And with that has given, really opened up the campus to a lot of these opportunities. So we have a you know, wonderful facility and this particular class is a philosophy class. So it looks like a pretty good way to spend a day, talk philosophy and be outside in Florida. And so that's a great example. Another example is this is Judge Mark Mahan and Professor Grant, I'll let you talk about this class experience because this was your class. Yes, um, hello everyone. I'm really excited to be here talking to you today. I'm gonna talk a little bit more in a few minutes um, about some of my classes and some of the some of the work that we do in social sciences. Um, this is one of my classes that we did outdoor last week. Uh, judge Mark Mahan, who's um, the chief judge for circuit four came and spoke to my introduction to criminal justice class. Um, I've been doing some guest speakers for my classes virtually this semester, even though I'm in class with my students, um, but I can only have half of them there at a time because um, my classes are pretty full. And so, um, I either have to do guest speakers virtually so everyone can attend or we have to do them outdoors, which in Jacksonville this time of year, that's a really nice thing to do. So Judge Mahan was really determined to come and speak to my students. He's always very excited to come to JU. Um, he loves our students. And so we had 
we had an outdoor class um, last Tuesday where he talked to the students about how the court system works and how they're dealing. He talked a lot about how they're dealing with COVID and trying to start having trials again and bring in jurors and things like that. Um, and so it was a really great experience for the student. We got to be outside for a while. Actually, the whole class got to be together for really the first time this semester since we're having to split them. So that was really nice for them to get to see their fellow students. Um, and they got to interact, um, you know, in a more personal way with with Judge Mahan so it was a it was a great morning and luckily it didn't rain <laughs> yeah that, yeah I think it's a great example of, of how the our faculty has adapted to these circumstances uh, they've done a wonderful job and I'm really proud to be their dean um, you know they've worked you know countless hours to get ready for this challenge of in-person instruction but at the same time being safe and you know if, if we have to do uh, you know, in terms of a streaming with technology, we're ready to do that. If you can come in person to class, we're ready for that as well. This next slide really just looks at lab safety and, and how seriously we're taking that. And not only do they have masks, but they have shields as well. And so, but to me, the important point is we're, they keep going, we're, we're moving forward. We're not letting the current circumstances stop student research. And that's really important to us. And again, my hat's off to the faculty for their work on this. Next, please. I'm going to let Dr. Conway talk about uh, pre-health in the college. All right, thank you. I am very honored to be here to talk to you guys a little bit about, um, you know, what we're doing on the pre-health side of things, on the Division of Science and Math side of things. Um, you know, like a lot of the university, we have a commitment to not only educating in our classrooms, but also meaningful hands-on experiences and. Um, you know, it's, yes, a little bit challenging uh, right now to um, get through these times to provide those to our students. But as you saw in the previous um, picture that the dean shared, you know, we, our faculty and thankfully to the support of JU, um, worked very hard over the summer to come up with plans on how we could really execute these labs uh, so they could still get the same experience. And yes, it's been, you know, creative, splitting the labs, doing, you know, more case studies, and but they're still getting that hands-on experience. and. Um, it's really, you know, so far in my experience been going, going pretty well in a, in a unprecedented time. That's the word of the year, right? Um, so yeah, so what um, is highlighted on this screen is just some of what we're doing specifically with our pre-health program. Um, these encompass a lot of people that I uh, enc encounter in the biology and the division of science and math. However, we have students majoring in every major across campus a lot within our college as well that go on uh, to professional health professional programs such as MD, PAs, physical therapy, optometry, dentistry, veterinary science, any of these things. Um, and so we have kind of a core um, group of faculty that tries to facilitate some of these opportunities for our students. You can see uh, on the left someone working uh, in, in undergraduate research. So uh, all of our, you know, faculty have their own areas of expertise. So we're actively uh, researching and involving both undergraduate and graduate students uh, in our research with. And so um, it's every time we get an update on faculty um, successes, I'm always impressed with more and more people bringing in um, all this funding to our university. So it's a very exciting time, I think, for our students. Um, and then, you know, we couple that a lot with uh, internships as well. So we have many local uh, relationships with you know, on my side of things, Mayo Clinic, one of uh, my colleagues just set up a really exciting uh, future internship program with Mayo. Uh, but our students go all across the country and even internationally to uh, ex get these experiences and, um, you know, really get them cultivate what they're interested in, but get them really ready to move on to their next step, whether it's graduate school or uh, going out in the workforce. Uh, the picture you see on the right is another community outreach um, example that where I had some students come and we held a STEM workshop in the Jacksonville area for little middle school students. I know a lot of my colleagues in every discipline go out and work with local schools and um, also bring them to campus in safe environments. So um, there's just so much that's going on. Um, and, and kind of one of the happier uh, pieces of news is that you know we've really been investing in this, this arm in the college and we're really having some success. We're, we're landing a lot of uh, students in these programs, competitive programs across the country. So uh, they're not only having fun doing it, but they're, they're reaching their goal that they're trying to make. So that's been really rewarding and really a group effort. And you know, from the administrative side of things, they're really supporting us uh, and, and allowing us to you know, provide these experiences for our students. Um, yeah, I think that's it. 
and, and I'd like to reiterate the, uh, about the Mayo internship. Uh, yeah. you know, the president, the provost have worked very hard on you know, having a really solid relationship with Mayo. And uh, one of our biology professors, William Penwell, has worked on getting this internship. And I think it's a microbiology and, and, and chemistry. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity for students to work really the leading uh, medical researcher in the country. And, uh, you know, it's, it's literally 15 minutes away from here. So uh, my, my hat's off to the biology department in offering that opportunity. Next. And I'll let uh, Professor Grant talk about this, please. Okay. Um, yes, um, so I'm back to talk about um, some of the things that we do in our social sciences department. Um, I was, you know, looking at the list um, just to introduce myself a little bit. I was, I was looking at the list of people who had signed up to, to um, be a part of this parade of colleges today for arts and sciences. And, um, you know, it just really excites me. I feel like that I've spent a large part of my life at JU. So a lot of you are alums. I am an alum, so I'm a product of JU too. Um, I am also a parent, a past and current parent. Um, so my husband and I graduated from JU in 92. Um, I have a daughter who graduated in 18 and she graduated again in 20 um, with her master's degree. And I have a daughter who's a sophomore now who will graduate in 23. So um, we have a really invested family in the school in addition to the fact that um, I'm honored to be a faculty member um, after working almost 20 years in the criminal justice system. So it's, it's I really, believe, you know, when I say I think JU is a great place to be, um, the small class sizes, the relationships we're able to have with our students. Um, I just don't really think um, you can compare it to anything else like Dean Corrigan was saying, um, you know, with with the small, you know, liberal arts environment that we provide to our students. Um, since I did, you know, spend a large portion of my life um, working in our criminal justice system, when I teach, I do um, try to stay really involved with the experiential learning side um, of, um, you know, of learning. I think, you know, applying what you're learning is really important and our division really, um, I think does a great job at encouraging experiential learning. Um, social sciences, it includes sociology, which I'm a part of, and the minor in criminal justice, which um, I largely teach in. Um, but we also have psychology, geography, political science, sustainability, history, um, and our social sciences major that, you know, we, you know, we teach all of those various disciplines um, under social sciences. And so a lot of students, you know, double major within our building or outside of our building. Um, like Dr. Conway was saying, like, you know, I have students who are minoring in criminal justice and majoring, you know, in chemistry or biology or, you know, thinking that they're wanting to work in forensics and things like that. Um, you know, and then coupling that with maybe a minor in psychology too. So I, you know, we're doing, you know, a lot trying to encourage students to look at majors and minors, especially with our new pods program. Students are able to see, you know, majors and minors that match up really well um, and how they can include service in that. Um, this picture is my media and crime class. Um, it is a service learning class that I offer every fall. Um, you can see the students in the bottom right hand corner. Um, so we spend um, some time in the class focusing on um, how the media focuses um, our perceptions and, and uh, affects our perceptions about our criminal justice system. And we do a focus on youth crime and at-risk youth. Um, and, and so what we do is my students, we learn about you know, kind of how you know, youth can be portrayed um, through the media when you know, they're offending or at risk of offending and then my students mentor youth that um, are in communities and schools programs. Communities and schools is our partner um, for this initiative and uh, students that have been put in um, uh, their, one of their programs um, because they're for some reason at risk of dropping out. And normally at the end of the semester, we get to bring them to campus and they get to spend time on the campus walking around and touring. Um, we have had three of our students who were mentored actually become JU students following the class, um, which is really exciting. Um, this year we're having to do things differently. I think like 
Dr. Conway was saying, the word of the year is pivot. Um, we've had to pivot and my students this fall are actually mentoring virtually. Um, so they're doing FaceTime calls with supervision from Duval County Schools and they're writing letters to each other um, through email that are being passed through the staff at communities and schools so they can still communicate. Um, so we haven't stopped doing service learning. We've just had to alter the way that we do it and we hope we're still making um, a really big impact in our Arlington community. So that's our area. Great. Thanks, Professor Grant, appreciate it. Uh, we also uh, offer, as, as Pro Professor Grant was talking about, uh, with all of those different majors in social sciences and some of the humanities as well, uh, really in terms of writing and, and research is preparation for uh, a career in law or career in law enforcement. And so uh, since I've gotten here, we've tried to focus on pre-law opportunities. And uh, one of the things that we've done is uh, to start a mock trial team. And last year was our first year and, and qualified for the regionals here. Uh, in the state of Florida and, and went and competed against Florida State and the University of Miami. And it was just a wonderful experience for the students. Uh, and they really had to do, you know, 95% of the work on their own, but it really put them under the, the mark and, and they responded. And, and this year they're coming back really with a veteran team, a more veteran team. And I think we've got about 20 students who are involved this year. Now it's gonna be done virtually, uh, but the law, adapting to that and so uh, mock trial will be part of that and so we're excited about that uh, we're working on internship possibilities and we've had a really nice relationship with some of our uh, law alumni and uh, we really appreciate their mentorship we had a great um, reception with students and a law alumni you know, last january and the students really enjoyed it and so we look to really uh, i think make that relationship last much, much longer and, and be really fruitful. So we appreciate all, all the impact there. Uh, at, at the end of all this, you know, the emphasis on pre-law and pre-health, that doesn't mean everyone's gonna be a doctor and everyone's gonna be a lawyer. But again, I think for a College of Arts and Sciences, you wanna make sure that you offer those opportunities because that says a lot about your college and the academic value of your college. And so, uh, we think it's important to invest in those areas and that's why we're doing it. Next slide, please. One of the examples, uh, and I think this is the only undergraduate legal internship in a U.S. district court, uh, really in the state and maybe the nation, I don't know. Uh, uh, Hannah Van Curren, who's a political science major, uh, interned this summer with federal judges. And, and that's just as, as an unbelievable opportunity. They spoke very highly of her. They, they've written strong recommendations for her. Uh, and it was a, just a great experience. And, and that's a competitive internship. And we're going to do it again this summer. But it's just an example of opportunities that are available in the community. Uh, again, you know, once we get beyond COVID, um, when we can interact a little more, you know, downtown is literally 10 minutes away, going right over the Matthews Bridge and right into the heart of our legal community. So there'll be opportunities there. Next, please. A couple other examples of, of community impact. Uh, we have a wonderful reading center uh, with Dr. Rob Kelly um, and the School of Education, which is also in the college. Uh, he or she, he is with the school board member, Cheryl Grimes. And what the Reading Center does is it teaches our students to become better reading teachers. And so uh, you have faculty who are mentoring teachers doing actual teaching. And uh, again, it, it assists the uh, local Arlington community greatly. Uh, we have, uh, I think, 25 students went through the Reading Center last year. Uh, you have 25 mentees uh, go through the a center last year and, and it looks like it's gonna keep growing because the demand is there. And obviously if you get reading correct uh, and, and in terms of teaching and interpreting, it, it really sets the foundation for uh, a really strong elementary education and, and education beyond that. So it's really important. Uh, our education, our school of education is also adapted to the current circumstance. We usually put about 40 to 50 students inside of, of public schools to help out and learn right away. I weren't able to do that this year because of COVID restrictions, understandably. 
but they're doing it virtually. And, and the, the School of Education faculty adapted to that and they're working um, out through our library and, and, and they're still impacting uh, student learning in elementary schools in the Arlington area and beyond. So uh, it, it's really, uh, I think, a, a great effort. Next one, please. Uh, and of course, our science of math, we don't want to forget, uh, you know, a, a really important part of the college. Uh, this is an example of a chemistry class, and I believe that's the Larkin, which is our floating classroom. Uh, again, having the river right on the campus gives you these opportunities, not only in marine science, which is a signature program, but also chemistry and, and other parts of biology. And, uh, and, and again, these are some of our most popular majors and, and understandably because they've got opportunities right outside and right on our campus to do their research and, and, and really put what's in the books into practice. Next. Uh, example from our humanities, uh, this is a communication class and we did a community impact uh, a contest uh, last year and really looking for classes that went out into the community and made a difference. And, and this is one of the, the winning entries. Uh, our communications department has their own in-house public relations agency. Uh, and uh, so what they do is they adopt a nonprofit every year and work with them um, to, uh, you know, for free to give them a positive message and a marketing message. And, and this particular year is with the Child Cancer Fund. And, uh, you know, about six students worked on this project and it, it really made a difference for the Child Cancer Fund. Donations went up after the, the um, campaign went into effect. And, and again, making this community impact, giving students these opportunities is what we're all about. And I think that's, that's it. We would love to answer any of your questions. Uh, we're here. Uh, if, if you want to think about it and send us an email, you can do that. My contact information is there. But be glad to, to discuss anything and answer any of your questions. Thank you so much, Dean Corrigan and um, Professor Conway and Grant. We, we appreciate you being here and talking to our group a little bit more about what's going on in the College of Arts and Sciences. We've, I saw some questions pop in um, to the chat privately to me as well. If, if anyone would like to ask a question live, please feel free to um, let me know and you can come off mute and, and ask our panel. Um, I know we've got a lot of current families in, the, uh, in attendance as well. Um, Dean Corgan, you talked a little bit about pods and um, I, I, I know we talk a lot about how um, we've seen so many just a, a real spike in double and even trip, triple majors and people adding on multiple minors as well. Can you talk a little bit more for our current parents about that pods app and kind of what that means for the College of Arts and Sciences? Sure. Uh, what we're trying to get across, and this came from the, the provost's office, is that we want you to be well-rounded and give you those opportunities to do that. That if your major doesn't have so many hours that you can then take another major and be, I think, a well-rounded component. For example, if you're interested in criminal justice, we have that minor, but you know, a nice uh, major and, and component with that might be psychology. Because again, a lot of uh, the issues dealing in the criminal justice world come down to psychological issues. And so, for example, that's a nice compliment. If we have somebody in the sciences and math who may want to do engineering, um, if, if they have the space in their schedule to do maybe, you know, a minor in the social sciences, again, to give them that broad view of, of, of what they're going into and the society they're going into. Uh, again, we, we just had a meeting with many of the technology companies in the area, and obviously they want technological talent, but they were also saying, we need employees with critical skills like communication. And if you have a technological crisis, we need somebody to be able to communicate about that crisis. We need somebody who can problem solve in a quick fashion. Uh, we need somebody who can, uh, in terms of writing and communication, be very clear about that. And so, again, we think we offer all that and the pods initiative allows us to do that because it offers many different majors and minors in combination. And, and we think a well-rounded person uh, graduating from Jackson University makes the better employee. 
Dean, this is Frank Mantat. I don't know if you can hear me. Hi, Frank. Hey, uh, good to hear all the programs. And as I was hearing them, I uh, was jotting down uh, names of people I know who might be able to offer internships, uh, you know, to these different programs. What is the process to, uh, I guess, uh, you know, get qualified to offer an internship? How does someone approach the university? And then what are the steps that they have to take? Sure, um, and, and, and Frank is, is on our advisory board. I see several of our advisory board members here. Uh, Stephanie Cost, uh, the first lady of the university, and Na Naomi Jackson from uh, Florida Family Services, and, and that may be Susan M uh, Masushi, I'm not sure. But, um, but anyway, but we're really uh, glad to have you here and, and really appreciate your support on the advisory board. Uh, sure, uh, really two ways to do it. Um, uh, first of all, you can always contact me and I can get you uh, introduced to the right people. Uh, we have a new career initiative uh, coming out of uh, the registrar's office and our, with our dean of the school of, uh, dean of, of the College of Business. And uh, with the, that initiative, what we're trying to do is open up all sorts of possibilities. And so uh, I can put you in contact with them. And you can also go directly to the major itself and start the process there to see if it's a good match. If it's a marketing or communications, we you know, obviously go to our communications department. It really depends on um, the area that the internship would cover. Thank you so much, Frank, great question. Uh, we also had a question come in privately from a freshman uh, parent who wanted to know just a little bit more about the engineering program. Has a child um, very interested in engineering, Dr. Dr. Corrigan, do you think you could touch on that a, li a little bit? Sure. Uh, our engineering program offers uh, two majors, mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. Uh, just this week, uh, we're moving to uh, towards starting the accreditation process with ABET, which is the national accrediting body for engineering programs. And so we're excited about that. Uh, our graduates have had really good success um, once they get through the program. Uh, there's lots of opportunities in, in engineering. And with the STEAM initiative coming on, on board in, in the next year or two, uh, again, we, you know, we think that's gonna open up lots of opportunities for students to do hands-on work. And so we're looking at a curriculum change that really focuses on design work. And so that's exciting, I think, for, for students uh, that they, again, can apply what they're learning in the classroom and really physically put their hands on solutions. And so we're excited about that. But again, you can contact me individually and I can get you more information, but, but that's, that's the overview of it. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, you all talked a little bit about some of your um, former students who have gone on to do you know, impressive things or perhaps students who have um, had some great internships during uh, COVID. Dr. Conway, can you talk a little bit about, um, just from the pre-health perspective as well, um, just some, some really impressive stories about some of, your, some of your students. I know that you've shared some of those with our office. I, I just think they're always so um, kind of inspiring to hear about what our students are doing and our recent grads. Do, do, you, do, you, um, do you have any that kind of come to mind you could share? Yeah, there's so many. And my neighbors just started mowing the lawn. I apologize. <laughs> Hopefully I'm loud enough. Um, yes, I mean, we, it's been so exciting to see. And, you know, I, I'm just finishing up um, my fourth year. So I've now seen some students come in and leave and now, you know, land their awesome new jobs. And I kind of wanted to piggyback a little bit on, you know, the pods question too. We just had a meeting last week um, trying to come up with cool combinations. And so I'm a biology professor, but one of the really, um, growing fields that a lot of you may be aware of are, are bioinformatics. So coming from the computing science side of things, the data science side of things, and how you analyze, you know, we get all this data in biology, but how you can come up with, um, you know, unique ways to analyze it, contributing to the medical field and, and kind of apply sort of a more mathematical and computing science background to the field of medicine. And so these are kind of some of the fun things that we're coming up with, because I think that is um, a dearth that we have in our community right now as a whole across the industry. And, you know, that would be a really, I think, cool um, job thing, you know, pathway that we could promote for some of our students. But um, in terms of some of the health stuff that we've had success already, 
Um, this past year, we had multiple students get accepted to medical schools. We have one starting next year uh, at Wake Forest, one that just started this year um, at an MD program at Penn State. We have someone in the New York School of Podiatry. Um, so really exciting, another DO program um, at PCOM. So we've, we've really seen these students that have had all these kind of cool experiences, some of these internships doing research here at JU. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, because Dean Corrigan and, and Professor Grant also mentioned some you know, very competitive internships, and we've had some success recently with our students landing um, these science um, summer programs. They're called uh, REUs. They're from the National Science Foundation, and these are super difficult to get into. We've had multiple students um, get accepted to these programs uh, and have, you know, again, going to cutting edge research, so like Dean Corgan was saying at, at Mayo Clinic, but they go across the country to all these different programs and really getting this invaluable, I mean, it'll be just a foot in the door to get into, you know, medical school or, or these um, professional programs. So, yeah, it's been very exciting and rewarding, I think, on the faculty side to see, you know, there, it's the students, you know, we're trying to help them get there, but it's the students that really earned it and it's been really, gratifying to see. Thank you so much for sharing those. I feel like that's always inspiring for current parents to hear um, some of those great success stories coming out of the college for sure. Um, Professor Grant, I, the, the photos of the outdoor classrooms were um, wonderful and that really is the norm this semester. Um, just beautiful Adirondack chairs out on the lawn with students enjoying um, a lecture outside. Uh, in terms of some of your, your classes that are more um, focused on experiential learning or mentoring, can you talk about how that looks now this semester? Oh, you're still on uh, mute. I know, it's, it helps if you unmute yourself, right? Um, I don't want anybody to hear my dog barking in the, back, in the background either. Um, so um, for us, I mean, we've definitely made some changes. Normally in a normal semester, I'd probably be supervising four or five internships and several independent studies that are doing service out in the community. Um, you know, but we've found ways to make things work. Um, I, you know, I have had a couple of students do virtual internships with places like Girl Scouts of America. Um, I have several students right now um, working on independent studies, um, uh, working on a research independent study with Dr. Ray Oldekowski and I uh, with the state attorney's office, um, looking at how the community views uh, juvenile offending and rehabilitation for juveniles. So we have four students working on that project with us. Um, I have my media and crime class that's doing the virtual mentoring and I have another student who's doing an independent study and virtually helping students at Terry Parker High School apply, do their college applications um, and learn how to do FAFSA and all of that kind of stuff. That's it's very difficult, especially for first generation college students. So she's busy doing that. She's making short video clips for them that they can watch. And then she's uh, you know virtually meeting with them um, to help them fill out those applications so that that's really cool. All of this we would normally be doing in person, <laughs> but, um, but we're figuring out how to do it and how to still help the community. You know, I'm hoping that internships will, will come back soon. Um, I'm, I normally get to partner with you know, our Sheriff's Department, our Public Defender's Office, our State Attorney's Office, Communities and Schools, Women's Center, Hubbard House. Like we do a lot of uh, community placements for internships with our students. Um, and I just think that's really, really valuable that they get that, you know, hands on experience where they can apply their academic learning um, to the real world. And it's benefited a lot of my students as well. I have some recent grads that um, I have one student who graduated top of her class uh, from FSU Law School, and she's now a prosecutor on the West Coast, a lot of students working in HR. I've had four or five students become police officers in the last few years. Um, and I've had some students get some internships with our public defender's office getting to work on um, some uh, resentencing type uh, projects based on deci recent decisions made by the Supreme Court. So, um, you know, we're, we're still working at it. And I think the students are still getting experience, you know, great experiences. It's just in a new and different way. We're, we're all learning new stuff. <laughs> we sure are. Um, I had a question come in privately about the new data science major. Um, Dean Corian, do you think you could just talk a little bit about um, that major and, and kind of how that's going to prepare our students for, um, for the field? Sure. Uh, it, it's a combination between computing and our mathematics department. 
and uh, the purpose of it is to really uh, respond to a need in the uh, community, in the business community. They're asking for uh, really students and, and graduates who are prepared to deal with all of the issues about big data that you're hearing about. Uh, if you don't have good data uh, in, your, in your business prospects right now, it's difficult uh, really to operate in this environment. And, and data science really is, is focusing on, on that need and responding to that need. And uh, again, uh, both the provost and our, our director of STEAM have worked to uh, get this opportunity uh, really put forward. And it's a great uh, partnership between our Department of Mathematics and our Computing Sciences Department. And uh, I think it, it will be very successful going forward. And, and it's, a, it's a great new opportunity for our students. Great, thank you so much. Um, we, we touched very briefly on NROTC, but I know it's only, I think, one of five um, programs in the state. Can you, we recently had a change of command there too. Can you just give a little um, update um, on NROTC? Yeah, it, it's an elite program. It, it, it's a, a fantastic program. We have now 90 cadets uh, in the program, which is on par with places like Notre Dame and, and I believe also Virginia Tech. Uh, it's really come across so well that we've had some of our students here give up opportunities to go to the Naval Academy and, and, and really come here and, and get their officer training. And so that really says a lot about the program. Captain Glenn Leverett has been um, with us uh, for over two years. Uh, there's now a change in command and um, because of orders from the Navy and that's the way the Navy operates and we're excited about uh, the new commander coming in. And, and with that, I think uh, what we want to do is build on the success of what's, what's been occurring. And uh, we had 30 cadets come in uh, on national scholarships. And those national scholarships are difficult to get. And again, with support from the president's office, uh, really kind of giving a, a well-rounded package to these incoming cadets. Uh, you know, uh, there, this, this program continues to advance and is really a, a point of pride, I think, for the college and the university and, and is producing, you know, fantastic, fantastic officers for the Navy. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, we'll do a last call here for questions in the chat. Um, and one last question for, for Dr. Corrigan. You talked a little bit about the pre-law program and, and the alums being so involved in that program as well. Um, can you talk just a little bit about what specifically we're looking for in terms of alumni volunteers, either with pre-law or just other areas of um, the College of Arts and Sciences right now. Yeah, yeah, we have we have advisory board members uh, with us today, and and uh, yeah, I think they uh, challenged me uh, to to look at two things: to look at uh, number one, giving opportunities for our students. So if alumni have great internships opportunities um, or some type of service learning, please let us know. Because again, uh, one of the, the challenges I think for colleges of arts and sciences is we're so diverse that uh, people don't really know what we do because we do so many things and we don't wanna stay hidden. And the way to really, I think, broadcast what the college is doing is having our students make impacts through internships and community service. And that's what we're really focused on. And so if, if alums have opportunities like that, please let us know. And then secondly is to advocate and, and, and support the college uh, financially uh, because uh, again, this is a challenging time in higher education and, and I think the president has done a wonderful job uh, really guiding us through this difficult time. But in order to do the things we'd like to do moving into the future, we need financial support. And so uh, if, if the alumni can help us with that and can put us into contact with people who can can help us, that would be fantastic. But those are really the two important parts. Uh, you know, one, provide opportunities for our students, and number two, advocate and support the college, both financially and, and really through getting the message out. Wonderful. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, corporate support and what that means in the college as well? Yeah, I, I, again, this, uh, I've been here a year and, and we, we're now starting our advisory board and what we're looking for is uh, opportunities to work with people in the community, both in Jacksonville and beyond. 
because uh, we need that support. Uh, an education, again, can cost, um, excuse me, can cost in terms of um, what we're looking at, you know, in, in the tens of thousands of dollars. And so any scholarship support that we can get from students, for students, I think is really important. And we also want to respond to the needs of, of what uh, I think the corporate community is looking for. And again, I think we can provide really well-rounded employees. And, and we all know that if we don't get personnel correct, it can really eat us alive in terms of time and, and, and function. And so we want to make sure that when students come out of the College of Arts and Sciences, they're not only going to be good employees, they're going to be really good people. And, and because we think that goes hand in hand and corporate support can make that happen. And so uh, it, it's critical to us. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I, I feel like that's a good lead in to tease out uh, Dolphin Dash. Our annual day of giving is coming up this spring. We'll be sure to send everybody more information about that, but it really is a collective day of giving. There will be a specific challenge for the College of Arts and Sciences, and we hope that everybody will um, make a gift of any size to support the to support the college on our uh, week of giving. So um, I think we have actually answered now all of the questions in the chat. I just want to thank everybody for joining and of course thank one more time our speakers um, for being so generous with their time. We, we truly appreciate your support. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this session will be recorded and added to our YouTube playlist. So please look out for that. Uh, we'll send it out in an email um, later this week as well. And we hope that you'll continue to celebrate with us this week. We've got a lot of great events going on. Um, feel free to look at the whole schedule at ju.edu slash hcfw or follow along with us at Facebook and Instagram. Thank you all again for joining. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and stay safe and healthy. Good Thank job. you all. Happy Thank homecoming. You. Take Thank care. you.